little bit of support on that differential. Be sure to get out of get the hell out of my face. Get out of here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. In this one, this is the last day of prep. Let's get the axle sucked up as high as it can go. We're gonna mark out the center on the axle on the frame so we have data to reference from. And then we're gonna remove the leafs, lift up the axle as high as we can. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a busy one. As well as Nick coming over from Enmotive. He is hilarious, we're gonna have some pretty funny conversations. So stay tuned and watch, guys. The big one for this, guys, is don't rush it. Find center. This is where all your data is going to be referenced off of, is from these measurements. When your axle sits at half travel, you want to make sure that everything is lined up. From the factory location, left to right, front to back. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's plumb bob it. Let's mark it. First thing is first, let's put some tape on this axle. About where that plumb bob is going to come down and hit. reason I'm using tape is you'll be able to see it better. That's the only reason. What's up, man? You know what's in here, eh? Ooh, ooh, ooh. When, what? They, when, you, they, when they drop this baddie off. I've had that forever. I mean, you, you can shut it if you want. I'll do it. I'm gonna get a bunch of reference marks. I've already got a reference line on top of my frame where the string sits. Sure, I just gotta pay attention a lot right here. Yeah, you're good, dude. And I'm amazed you're not done yet, honestly. It's a lot to do. <laughs> it's a lot to do. There's my cross right there. I'm also gonna pump up around the axle onto the ground. Just if I lose my references, I've got other references to go off of. This is where you take your time. Spend the time to do this. I don't care if it takes you two hours or two days. All your data is based off of what measurements you have here. The longer you take to do all this, the better it's gonna be. Are you gonna have it done in time for SEMA? Oh, hell yeah. SEMA, well, SEMA stuff doesn't have to run. I could pull it up like this and be like, oh yeah, yeah, great build, great build. Great build. Oh, a nice Lamborghini intake on here. Small block Chevy 350. See that Miata yet? What the Lamborghini be? The Lamborghini, oh, no, it it, no, it's a, it's a Miata. Lamborghini intake manifold. Yeah, but, that's and everybody's like, it's a, it's a twin turbo Lamborghini. And then, and then, and then get close and it's like, a, it's a small block Chevy with the, with the Lamborghini intake manifold. Really? It doesn't look like it's like mounted very well. And everything else is, you know, Bluetooth wastegates. I'm not hating, maybe it has potential on the road. That plumb off the center of that. It's not finished right now. And then I got a black line right there. Right here. Oh, it's shooting up. Well, thanks for coming over, Nick. Yep. I had no idea you were coming by. So you knew I was out here. Surprise. You just had this weird feeling I was out here. Well, the feeling was correct, sir. Yeah. It's a, a tidal wave type of thing, you know. I can feel it in the atmosphere. It's got like, it's like a bar barometer. Is that what that is? So what we're going to do now is find center going down our frame using nothing really special. I want that bubble dead center. Cold beverage, cold garage. Cold beverage. Dog barking in the background. I'm just going to ruin the whole video. You got to start, start over. Actually, Dog barking just ruined the whole thing. Dude, look at that. I'm in. So what we're going to do now is if I lose my black line, I'm going to center punch and pull holes here, just in case I lose my references. Since those lower arms bolt onto your leaf perch, right, and go underneath the axle, yep. and then obviously as it goes up, it rotates forward, right. back, and then forward again, yep. I need to figure out, which I will, when it goes all the way up and it's maxed out at full dump, mm -hmm. how much more that axle moves forward. And I'm gonna offset my notch to that. Which my guess it'll probably be like three quarters of an inch. So when this thing is at full dump, it's center of that notch. Well, that's, a, that's a math equation that I never made it to in school right there. That's... I'll show you how to do it, it's so simple. It's so mm -hmm. simple. No, I mean, what you're saying is making sense, but the formula to, to, to figure out the math before is... we just put things in place, that's not, that's not for us. We're not doing math like that. Uh, now let's reference the four. Then this side is done. This is crucial. I don't care if this, like I said, I don't care if this takes a day, just takes two hours a week. This is the most important step. You're, you're already expecting too much out of me. I'm here to drink beer. That's fine, dude. That's fine. Totally fine. Totally fine. <laughs> I'm going to just let me know when I'm like over here. Yeah. yeah. 
So now what we're doing is we're doing a reference off the axle to the ground on this side. And then on this side, that'll also let us know that the axle is in line forward and back or forward and aft. Is that the correct term? Starboard. Starboard side. I think I mopped the floor. Okay, I made a mark on the ground, which is actually, in the, it's perfectly underneath that plumb bob. Okay, one side done. This time, I'm only gonna do a dollar. I'm not gonna do a mix. Oh! These marks are the most important. Nice. One side done. So now we'll start marking the last ones. I'm gonna go to where it just touches. I'm gonna push down on it, put a little weight on it. So I got a little bit of a mark. Then I'm gonna go ahead and sharpie that mark. And that lets me know that that axle is straight that direction. We're gonna do it one more time on the other side. Brother, it can't be more than 47 degrees in this garage right now though. Are you cold? I'm, I'm okay, but I'm just saying. I mean, we're not dropping any hard R's in here or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? If I'm on TV show, that's how I'm treating it. No politics in it. No politics rolling up looking like that. Okay, well, those references are done. I say we're good to start taking the reefs out and lifting it up. We'll close the garage door so Nick doesn't freeze it up. You're kind of warm now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too bad. I'm okay. Nice. <laughs> well, it would have been good if you didn't cough in that. Actually, that might that might make for a pretty funny. Did you get some B-roll and you're like, <laughs> 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 should you? I don't know. <laughs> just, it's just you puking. It's just B-roll you puking. <laughs> and then the next scene, I've got like this on. <laughs> this should go in there somewhere. This should go towards the end. Happens fast. All right, let's remove the drum. I know the viewers are going to think you did this in probably like 14, 15 minutes in total, you know? Now we're removing a drive shaft because we've got to lift this thing way up in the air. Actually, I really don't need to remove the drive shaft. It's, been, it's fine. You, you could leave that connected. I actually can't leave it connected. Yeah, I, I actually, I've never done this, but you're absolutely right. I don't need There's this no reason. Need to okay, do scratch that. We're going to leave the drive shaft on. It doesn't even happen. Let's shut this off. Act like it never happened. I say throw nice. jack stands underneath it. Start doing our U-bolts. And then put a piece of board to hold the differential up. I'm not just talking to him. I'm talking to you too. So pay attention here. We're not taking a drive shaft off, so we'll go ahead and start with that. Since we left that in place, we could just go ahead and yeah. either remove the axle from the springs and then, you know, bring it up in place where we need to. Right. I'm going to grab a piece of wood. I'm going to put it across here. And uh, you should, you shouldn't even have to do that. So what do you what, what do you run the wood for? Just to hold the, to hold the differential because it's still going to be it's still, It'll still pivot a little bit. It's still not pivot much, but yeah. A little bit of support on that differential. We should be good. How to get the hell out of my face. Get out of here. Now we're going to remove the leaf bolts on I, on each side, and this thing should be floating. Now let's see what this axle does. Born ready. She floats. Just go leave that in one of your neighbor's driveway. Just drop it off, just tuck it in their lawn. Yeah, just, uh, uh, we'll load it up into my bed of my truck and we'll start driving through the neighborhood and just offload them wherever we feel is necessary. Put it right down the middle. Right in the middle of the road. Well, I can't believe these don't sag. I mean, I wonder if they had a whole lot more arch in them originally, but I feel like those boys just don't sag a whole lot, huh? Not as bad as my S10. That's crazy. Another way to lower it is besides lowering shackles. All right, flip the, flip the axle on top right there if you want. There's that one. You can remove leaves, or yeah. if that's not enough, you can move this mount up. That's a lot of work. People do that so all move, the time. So moving, moving the axle above the leaf would that's have been a whole lot easier drop. than, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of drop. Just itself. Maybe just take out a couple leaves then. Let's do this with my stupid hat on. We have a lot of movie clips coming up. <laughs> you should flash up the, is it a Marvel or is it Harry that does gets electrocuted? <laughs> Uh, Marv. 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 Yeah, cause, yeah, yeah, you're right. Because he's like, he starts screaming for Harry. Remember when he had the, uh, Joe Pesci had a spider on him? Mm-hmm. He's like, Marv. Marv, what are you doing? Don't move. Don't move. 
Marv, what are you doing? I... You know if you hit him in the chest that hard with that crowbar, brother. he would be dead. Dude, they, they would have died multiple times trying to break it in their house. Yeah, but you also see videos where people like actually lived out of like falling out of airplanes and stuff too. You know, you never know, man. True. Humans are pretty resilient like I that. I know Arnold did it in commando. He jumped out of a plane and lived. He also fought the Predator and lived too, which is wild. Okay, mother... Stick this in your sore-ass blame. Wrap this on your sore-ass blame. <laughs> yeah, I've never blocked out. I remember things pretty well. I think he's gonna fight me until the bitter end. Got all the, got all the angles right here. All the angles. Even a couple dangles up in there. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Brother. All right, let's try this again, shall we? You'll find me just as much. It's a little better. Way you better. Can't argue with those results. What I want to do is punch this. Mmm, it's nice. Can you just down the bone? Hey, you're in 19 minutes on this one already. Shut it down. All right, so what we're doing now is we're lifting up the axle as high as we can. We got this, Nick, right? I've just been standing here pointing fingers, so yeah, I, I definitely got this. You only as high as a jacker go? Well, as high as you want to on it. I think, oh, it, I think we'll do another couple of clearance. That's, that's it right there for that. Okay. Kamatsu. Is that it? That's it. It's all we got. That's all everything. Got. I mean, I'm just doing that to hold it. Keep it steady. Keep it steady. Steady, Freddy. Yeah, this axle has to go this way a lot, but we'll get there when we get there. Those holes, I guess, really don't matter on top of my axle because of uh, pinion, but I've got references on the ground. And plus, I can also measure from here to the bumper. Believe it or not, the bumper is actually square on this thing. Yeah, it's impressive. It's actually square. I measured the bumper to different references, and it both checks out on both sides, which is nice. I've been held hostage for four hours. I do appreciate you coming over. I was kind of surprised having <laughs> you over. Heck yeah, dude. You can hit that right button whenever. Someone just leaving the table of beer cans and stuff up over here. I'm cleaning the lens off. Always dirty. It's the next day. And let me show you where we left off on this thing because I got a little bit done off camera. Nothing that really is important where I had to record the whole time. So he just took off a little bit ago, but what we did was we got the axle sucked up to the frame and it actually rests just about on that one. I mean, it is super, super close. That one's got a little bit of a gap, but I'm not worried about it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that this thing is centered, right? So. Remember we plumb bobbed it before, we're gonna do it again, make sure that we're on our marks on the driver's side and passenger side. Then once we know that those are 100% true, we're gonna hold it in place with these U-bolts. But first we gotta clean them up with the grinder and the vise. That means my truck is sitting at half travel. I can use the board and teach you guys what half travel means and what the purpose of it is. And why did I set it up here and not in a different location? I will explain that in a little bit. Let's get this axle in place. Also what I did, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself too much, is I had to move my carrier bearing up because my painting angle was all messed up. Nothing set in place yet. I just took it off just to get my measurements, heights and whatnot figured out. So let's go ahead and make sure that this thing is straight and true and we'll get those held in place. Now remember, everything is based off this. So you need to make sure that this is spot on. If it's not spot on, then you're not welding it in place. Do not do anything until you've got this perfectly straight and true. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I've got this roll over, right? I'm just rolling it with my finger just to make sure we got it in line. What I'm gonna do, strap it so it don't move. All I'm doing is I'm just moving it over just a little bit with my finger. We're gonna get down here and look. See if we can get to stop moving. Now you can see that Sharpie mark, right? This thing should sit dead center on it. Look at that. That is on there 100%. I'm gonna check the back of the axle, coming down the other direction. And I'm gonna do the front and back on here. Now we're on the passenger side, let's take a look. 
That is money. Got the string wrapped around the leaf mount. Going down, wrap down around that axle. Heading down there, let's do the back side of it. I'm gonna do the back side of this one, back side of this one, and then we're gonna be good to go. It's awfully quiet out there. So you can see right there is my Sharpie mark. I say that's money, guys. I may have lined this up off camera and it might have taken me about three hours to do it. So just be aware, it takes time. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna call it quits on this episode. I'm gonna stop it right here. The reason is, is the next one, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Now that that axle is up, up against the frame, we're gonna clean up those U-bolts and we're gonna go over a whole bunch of stuff. So please stay tuned. The next one, and from here on out, should get a lot more exciting. Those first couple episodes were kind of slow. I apologize for that. The prep takes time. You don't wanna rush it. If you rush it, lose anything, you have to backtrack and it just becomes a whole mess. So from here on out, the build's gonna start getting exciting. So like I said, stay tuned. Please follow along. Thanks everyone, take care, bye. I don't wanna give away too much, but some stuff has been happening, okay?